So guys, what's going on? Uh, Kading, Greg Kading is out. His lawyer won't let him do it. So, so we've been waiting around for Kading all day, and yeah, and now he's not coming. Show. Really, I wanted to talk to him because there's so much to ask him. Yeah. Puffy was going up the stairs, and he said, "I don't care if Tupac die, I don't care if Biggie gotta die, and I don't care if Shug gotta go to prison for the rest of his life." <laughs> Now, getting back to Russell, Russell was following in the footsteps of his dad, and he was able to work through the LAPD and have all the things that had to be done within the LAPD. He certainly knew the streets very well, and uh, his circumstances in his case were far more tragic because he was killed in the line of duty. Killed in the line of duty. The best case, did, Pac, did Tupac life mean anything? Because they never saw that case. Sometimes if you saw the first case, you might saw the second case. But that never happened, correct? Yep. But he did testify reluctantly. The death row records security chief Reggie Wright Jr. once told him, quote, we're going to get those mothers who downed Pac. Ice and I, we've heard consistently, Shug, that you're the person behind the hit on Biggie. Well, they looked at y'all and told y'all the ass live. A reportedly missing photograph and former police chief Bernard Park's daughter came up during testimony today in the wrongful death lawsuit filed against the city by murdered rap star Biggie Small's mother. And that, to me, was probably another motive for Chief Parks to want to squash a lot of the information. There was an effort to, to keep a lot of the information away from the public. This declaration from a jailhouse informant named Kenny Boagney links crooked LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of rap star Biggie Smalls. Okay. Right, you see, Suge was willing to say, I didn't know those two cops, but maybe Reggie knew them. Never met those dudes, they never worked for me. They knew Reggie right. They didn't know me. You always will tell you, those are Reggie people. <laughs> And Reggie was fast to say, I didn't know them either. I was just interested in why he would point the finger at Shug so quick. He wouldn't say it to you, but he definitely pointed it. We call that dry snitching. That Perez told how he worked security for Death Row Records the night Biggie Smalls was assassinated, and how he and Mac used cell phones to set up the hit. Bo Agni now says he was instructed by an LAPD detective to share his story with no one else investigating Biggie's murder. Judge Florence Marie Cooper says LAPD may be involved in what she calls deliberate and intentional concealment of information. Jailhouse informant Kenny Boagney ties former LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of rap star Biggie Smalls. LAPD has withheld reams of other evidence as well, including at least two other jailhouse statements implicating dirty cops Mack and Perez in Biggie's murder. A thousand pages of information were withheld describing Mack and Perez's involvement in Biggie's murder. Three different jailhouse informants who offered to wear a wire were all turned down by LAPD. A wire, say informants, that could have caught jailed officer Perez boasting about his involvement with death row records and the Biggie Smalls murder. Judge Florence Marie Cooper lists all the new information she says links former crooked LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of Biggie Smalls. The sheer volume of the information, says the judge, belies any LAPD argument that it comes from just another jailhouse informant. Murder is pretty simple. The first person you go after is the spouse. Perez was all involved. They were trying to kill me too, but she's good Perez. And, and, and Reggie was good friends, and Perez and Sarita and Reggie is great friends, and so all those three together was trying to plot. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking Pac, watching him. So that just took the iceberg when something happened. But that was, there was a plan already to do something to him. Atlanta wasn't even the shooter, you know? He was actually a good kid, too, you know? I'm quite sure they, 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 they saw the first one, they were, saw the second one, because the same circle of people. You got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up. Okay, this is part three of the uh, Russell Pool theory of the murders of Tupac and Biggie. And we talked uh, about the successful decimation of the murder trial in Snoop Dogg's murder trial when he was accused of killing Philip Waldemarium. And there's this deepening of ties between 
a number of players, David Mack, Rafael Perez, uh, Kevin Gaines, Sharitha Knight, David Kenner, and Snoop. And they work for a number of years on this murder trial. And because of that, they grow a lot closer. It wasn't defeated in 30 minutes. It wasn't defeated in a week. It wasn't defeated in a month. It took a lot of time to defeat this murder trial. There were intimidation of specific witnesses and there was constant coordination between the David Kenner uh, criminal defense and this group that is helping Snoop defeat this murder trial. And, to, and now I wanna talk about gangs in the police. Uh, when David Mack is arrested in the bank robbery, he immediately declares that he is a blood member and he aligns himself with the Bloods in jail. And it's a big problem. It's a big problem in the military. You have gang members that join the military. They want to learn how to shoot guns. They want to learn about tactics. They want to learn about all that stuff. And we have gangs right now in the LAPD. We have gangs in the LA County Sheriff's. And one of the things that uh, came out when Russell was doing his investigation was that the cops that were working for Death Row Records were teaching the gang members police tactics. They were teaching them how to use the radios, the scanners, how to be lookouts, how to do drug deals effectively, how to have supervision in the drug deals, how to have multiple layers of security, and, and all of this other stuff that was going on at Death Row Records. Now, was Shug Knight involved in the money laundering and the, and the drug trafficking and all of that stuff? I mean, that's never been proven. But it is proven, pretty much, that that stuff was going on at Death Row Records. And the gangs were heavily involved in Death Row Records. You had Bloods and Crips working together on albums like The Chronic. You have Shug, who's a Blood, and you have Snoop, who's a Crip. And you have uh, a steady stream of people that come in. DJ Quick, a Blood. Uh, Daz, a crip, and they, these are these are incendiary situations that happen, and there's no shortage of drama that goes on inside of Death Row Records with these gangs. You have the situation that happens in Atlanta with Jake, and Jake gets shot. There's an altercation that happens inside. One side's told to leave. The other side's told to wait 15 minutes. Well, Shug's not going to wait 15 minutes. He waits five, and then he leaves. And there's an altercation out in the parking lot, and the upshot is Jake gets killed. Now, Jake getting killed is significant only because once Jake is out of the way, Reggie Wright Jr. moves in to really be the right hand of Shug Knight at Death Row Records. And once Reggie is the right hand of Death Row Records, you've basically had a full-on gang takeover at Death Row Records. And why do I say that? Well, Russell suspected that Reggie Wright Jr. Reggie Wright Sr. were gang members that had infiltrated the police department. And now, with the arrest of Reggie Wright Jr. and Reggie Wright Sr., we pretty much know that these guys have always been gang members. And that's why when Tim Brennan and Bobby Ladd released their book, they were talking about how they were white guys in the middle of a project and they were outnumbered and they thought it was all gonna go bad for them, they were gonna get killed, and it really didn't look good. Reggie Wright Sr. appears, and it's like the parting of the Red Sea, literally because they had such respect for Reggie Wright Sr. that all of a sudden, this explosive incendiary situation just now dissipates and they go from being in fear of losing their lives in this situation to everything's calm, everything's cool, and it's all, uh, and it's all okay. Well, why? Because Reggie Wright Sr. is in the gang. And as a gang member, and it's one of those things quietly uh, amongst them. He held a lot of sway with the gangs. The interview with Death Row Dave, he said, hey, if a pyro would get out of line, Reggie Wright Jr. would go over and straighten them out. Now, is it because Reggie Wright Jr. is this tough guy that can beat the shit out of everybody? It's not that. It's the fact that he has hierarchy within the gangs, and that hierarchy is respected. There is order inside of gangs. 
And so we have the gangs inside of Death Row Records, we have the gangs inside of LAPD, and we have the gangs that get absorbed into the LA County Sheriffs. And it's a problem that continues to this day. It continues in the military, it continues in police organizations throughout. And years ago, Lobo uh, over in Mexico had told me that we had uh, the cartels inside of our police and I didn't believe him, but I believe him now. And there are a few incidents where we can see the police tactics that they use. At the El Rey Theater, in the beating death of Kelly Jamerson, we have police tactics being used. We have police there, there are layers of security, and they know that the call is made. Suge is on his way out the door. He's getting into his car just as the stomping and what have you happens. And how did that work? I think this shows us the incendiary nature of the fact that gangs were inside of the police and inside of death row records. This is, while Snoop is awaiting his trial for murder, he's up there throwing gang signs, creating a big problem in a whole audience full of bloods. And somebody clearly had to die and the bloods go after Kelly Jamerson and they beat and they stomp him to death. And because there were so many police present, that case is derailed because a phone call from Compton Police, Reggie Wright Sr., over to the investigator says, do you really want to destroy the careers of all these good cops? You know, let's just let this go. And it's agreed that this is just a gang thing and this can't be solved. And so the beating death of Kelly Jamerson, when they actually had eyewitnesses, plenty of eyewitnesses for a prosecution, everything is just forgiven and they move on. Nothing to see here, move along, it's just a gang thing. And this really sets the tone for how Death Row Records rolls. They are turning this system on itself by having cops involved in the record label and in the gangs and the turning the entire system on itself. These prosecutions can't continue because too many people are compromised. More later. The murder is pretty simple. The first person you go after is the spouse. All the artists at Death Row was willing to come with him. David Mack worked for you, right? No, ma'am. Never? Never met him. Never heard of him. Didn't know who he was until the accusations that he possibly did work for me. And that's been investigated by LAPD and all of that. Hey, why would I want a paper trail when I never brought him around nowhere? So if I'm going to hide him in secret, you think I'm going I'm to let somebody catch a paper trail? They were paying cash by two. Perez and was all involved. They were trying to kill me too, but see, because Perez and, and, and Reds and was good friends, and Perez and Sarita and Reds is great friends, and so all those three together was trying to plot. How about Rafael Perez? Never heard of him until all the incidents happened. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking Pac, watching him. So that just took the iceberg when something happened. But that was, there was a plan already to do something to him. So why does everyone keep telling me that David Mack was working for you? Yeah, I never heard that. You never heard that? That he worked for me. I, you uh, never heard that? Wait a minute, uh, let me clear that Come up. On. I'm saying by anyone that's credible, that will work around there or anything. But, um, like I said, that was all investigated by LAPD. I turned over my payroll, everything. You guys gonna tell you, those are Reggie people. <laughs> Atlanta wasn't even the shooter, you know? He was actually a good kid, too, you know? I'm quite sure they, 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 they saw the first one, they saw the second one, because it's the same circle of people. You got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up. Same people, same circle of people. It had nothing to do with me, you know.